It is impossible to envision an effective leader who lacks self-discipline, willpower, self-control, and self-mastery. The overarching characteristic of a leader is that he is in complete control of himself and every situation. There is seldom a time in history when leaders were so needed and so much in demand as today. We need leaders at every level of society, both in the profit and non-profit sectors. We need leaders in our families, businesses, places of worship, community organizations, and especially in politics. We need men and women who take their responsibilities seriously and are willing to step forward to take command of the situation. Fortunately, leadership is learnable. Leaders are developed, usually self-developed over time, through hard work, experience, and training. As Peter Drucker once said, there may be natural-born leaders, but there are so few of them that they make no difference in the great scheme of things. You progress through four levels of activity and responsibility. First, you start off as an employee with limited knowledge and experience. Then, as you grow, learn, and develop the ability to get results, you evolve upward and become a supervisor with responsibility for the performance and results of other people. As you continue to move up the scale of supervision, improving your ability to get things done through others, you become a manager. A manager is someone who assigns work to people with demonstrated competence in certain areas. Managers have a broader view, and this comes with greater responsibilities. As you move up the scale of management, becoming more knowledgeable and effective in getting more and better results for more and different people, you reach the highest level, that of a leader. At this stage, you are responsible for determining what is to be done, rather than how it is to be done. It is said that some leaders are born, some are made, and some have leadership thrust upon them. Leaders emerge or are promoted to deal with a situation requiring leadership ability. In its simplest terms, the role of the leader is to take responsibility for results. The primary reason that people are promoted into increasingly higher levels of leadership is that they demonstrate the ability to get the required results at each level. The ongoing question for a leader is always, what results are expected of me? Clarity is essential. The main reason that some people are not promoted into greater leadership positions, or perhaps they're even fired, is because of a failure to execute. They do not do the most important jobs expected of them, nor do they get the results demanded of them. The first quality of leadership, based on 3,300 studies of leaders reviewed by James McPherson, is the quality of vision. Leaders have vision. They have the ability to project forward into the future and develop a clear picture of where they want their organizations to go. They then have the ability to share this vision with others and gain others' commitment to make this vision a reality. You become a leader when you accept responsibility for results. You become a leader when you begin to think, act, and talk like a leader. You become a leader when you develop a vision for yourself and for your company, your life, or your area of responsibility. Hundreds of books have been written about leadership and the importance of vision, yet they can be boiled down to a single principle. A military leader has a vision of victory from which he never deviates. A business leader has a vision of success for the business to which he or she is completely committed. A leader is a standard bearer. The leader sets the standard for the organization or the department. It is not possible for anyone in the organization to have a clearer vision or to aspire to a higher standard of excellence than the leader. For this reason, the leader is the role model, the one who sets the tone and the morale for everyone in the organization. The personality and influence of the leader affect everyone below him in the company, organization, or department. You cannot raise morale in a business. It filters down from the top, from the leader. The behavior of the leader influences and affects the behavior of everyone else. If the leader is positive, confident, and upbeat, everyone in the organization will be influenced by his behavior and will be more confident, positive, and upbeat as well. Walk the talk. When you become a leader, you must discipline yourself to be leader-like. You must walk, talk, and act the part of a leader. You become a different person with different responsibilities than a manager when you are working your way up. You are part of the staff or the sales team. When you become a manager, you are part of management. This means that when you are part of the staff, your orientation is upward and sideways. But when you become a leader, your orientation is downward, toward all the people for whom you are responsible. Perhaps the most important behavior of a leader is for you to discipline yourself to be a role model. Imagine that everyone is watching you and patterning everything they do and say based on your behavior. When you become a leader, you no longer have the luxury to let it all hang out. From the time you are promoted into leadership, 
you have a special responsibility to discipline and control your words and behaviors in such a way that you bring about the very best possible results for your organization and for other people. Set the standards. The leader sets the standards for the organization's behavior, quality of work, personal organization, time management, and appearance. In excellent organizations, the leader is the person whom everyone looks up to and wants to follow. Your followership increases directly in proportion to the quality of your leadership. The better leader you are, the more people will follow you, and the more successful your organization will be. Leadership is not merely about being in charge. It is about taking responsibility, creating a vision, and inspiring others to follow. A true leader is a role model, constantly displaying qualities that inspire others to achieve their best. Remember, true leadership is not just a skill but an attitude. Everyone here is either a self-made millionaire or intends to become one in the future. Everybody loves the subject of becoming wealthy. Now, I'm going to give you seven keys to becoming an outstanding leader in this industry and to becoming one of the highest paid individuals in our society. Becoming wealthy isn't complicated. To become a millionaire, you don't have to completely change yourself. Instead, you need to develop character beyond what 99% of people in the world possess. This includes developing qualities like honesty, discipline, building quality relationships, and having the willingness and ability to work, set priorities, and handle various challenges. Without these qualities, achieving wealth is nearly impossible. The first key is to dream big dreams. Nearly every successful person has cited a turning point in their life when they decided to pursue their dreams vigorously. It's about making a firm decision that you will become wealthy, that you will become a millionaire, and that you're willing to put in the hard work, long hours, and sacrifices required. The turning point is when you make the decision to commit fully to your goal. Now let's discuss what I call the seven C's. The first C is clarity. Clarity is crucial for success. I've consulted for numerous corporations, both large and small, and I found that problems often arise when there's a lack of clarity about what the company is doing or how it's doing it. I've developed a program called the Two-Day MBA, which emphasizes the importance of clarity in various aspects of a business. It's essential to be clear about your product, your target customers, your competitive advantages, and your strategies for attracting and retaining customers. The second C is commitment. Success requires unwavering commitment to your goals. You must be willing to work diligently and persistently towards your objectives, no matter the obstacles or setbacks you encounter along the way. The third C is competence. To excel in your field and earn significant wealth, you must continuously strive to improve your skills and expertise. Identify the essential skills needed for success in your industry and dedicate yourself to mastering them. The fourth C is concentration. Focus single-mindedly on your most important tasks and avoid distractions. Concentrate your efforts on high-priority activities that align with your goals. The fifth C is constraints. Identify and address the constraints that are limiting your progress towards your goals. Focus on eliminating or overcoming these obstacles to accelerate your success. The sixth C is continuous learning and development. Dedicate yourself to lifelong learning and personal development. Invest time and effort into expanding your knowledge and skills to stay ahead in your field. The seventh C is courage. Have the courage to take risks, face challenges, and pursue your goals relentlessly. Be willing to step out of your comfort zone and embrace uncertainty in pursuit of your dreams. In summary, by embodying these seven C's, clarity, commitment, competence, concentration, constraints, continuous learning and development, and courage, you can unlock your potential for success and achieve your goals of becoming wealthy. It's not an easy journey, but with dedication and perseverance, you can turn your dreams into reality. You'll see, this is why it's so important to have absolute clarity regarding your goals in each area of your life. It's essential for you to be motivated to perform at your very best. An important point to note regarding the ABC formula is that your behaviors are not guaranteed to achieve the consequences you desire. However, every behavior or action you engage in will generate some kind of consequence. One of the most critical aspects of understanding motivation and behavior is realizing that both actions and inactions have consequences. What you do, as well as what you fail to do, will have consequences in your future. Sometimes these consequences can be dramatic and long-lasting. A beneficial exercise for success is to write a description of the type of person you'd like to be and the kind of life you'd like to live. 
Your most powerful faculty is your ability to think. The more accurately you can think about who you are, what you want to accomplish, and how to accomplish it, the more effective and successful you'll be. The eighth law of success is the law of subconscious activity, which has several applications. The first part of this law states that whatever thought or idea mixed with emotion you hold in your conscious mind will be accepted as a command by your subconscious mind. This means that whatever thought, idea or goal you can hold in your mind on a continuing basis, you can achieve because your subconscious mind will work to organize all your thoughts and actions to bring it into reality. The second part of the law of subconscious activity is that, once you give it the proper commands, your subconscious mind will trigger your reticular cortex and its function, the reticular activating system. Your reticular cortex alerts you to events and circumstances around you that are consistent with your dominant desires or concerns. For example, if you decide you want to buy a red sports car, this desire will signal to your reticular cortex that red sports cars are now of paramount importance to you. From that moment on, you would notice red sports cars everywhere. Your reticular cortex will cause you to be extremely sensitive to opportunities around you that would help you achieve your goals. The third part of the law of subconscious activity is that your subconscious mind controls your body language and tone of voice. Professor Moravian of the University of California at Santa Barbara concluded that 55% of the message you send when communicating with others is contained in your body language, 38% in your tone of voice, and only 7% in the actual words you use. Your body language and tone of voice are largely controlled by messages about yourself and your goals that you've sent to your subconscious mind. For example, when you've had a success of any kind, you send a charge of emotional energy to your subconscious mind that tells it you're a winner. As a result, you walk, talk, act, and think like a winner. The ninth law of success is the law of expectations, often called the law of the self-fulfilling prophecy. It simply states that whatever you expect with confidence tends to materialize in your life. You get not what you want, but what you expect with the greatest intensity. For this reason, an attitude of positive self-expansion goes hand in hand with great success in every area of your life. The wonderful thing about the law of expectations is that you have the power to manufacture your own expectations. You can decide to expect only good things to happen to you. You can become convinced that the entire world is conspiring to do you good. The way you apply the law of expectations is by constantly looking for the good in every person and every situation. When you have a temporary setback, you can look for the valuable lesson it might contain. This kind of affirmation causes you to approach everything you do with a more positive, open and optimistic attitude. The most powerful of all expectations are the expectations you have of yourself. You should approach everything you do with an attitude of calm confidence. The tenth law of success, which applies to many other areas of life, is called the law of concentration. It states that whatever you concentrate on and think about repeatedly with emotion tends to become more and more a part of your inner and outer life. Some of the most important work in psychology shows that if you dwell upon qualities you wish to develop, like courage, sincerity and persistence, you tend to actually build those qualities brick by brick into your character and personality. The law of success, the law of habit, states that virtually everything you do is automatic and unthinking. You are largely a creature of habit. Good habits are hard to form but easy to live with, while bad habits are easy to form but hard to live with. One of the hardest things to change are bad habits which are counterproductive to the goals you want to achieve. Therefore, it's important to analyze your habits carefully and decide whether they are moving you towards or away from your goals. The twelfth law of success is the law of attraction. It says that you are a living magnet and that you inevitably attract into your life the people, events, and circumstances that harmonize with your dominant thoughts. The law of attraction has been written about for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. It's often referred to as the law of sympathetic resonance. It explains that if you have a clear goal or idea, you will attract people and resources that can help you realize that goal. Another illustration of the law of attraction is its opposite, the law of repulsion. When you become a particular kind of person because of the way you change your thinking, you will find yourself attracted to people who are similar to you, and repelled by those who aren't. The thirteenth law of success is the law of choice, which says that you are always free to choose the content of your conscious mind. Your thoughts control your reality, and since no one else can think for you, the thoughts you choose to harbor determine everything that happens in your life.
The 14th law of success is the law of optimism, which states that a positive mental attitude goes hand in hand with success and happiness in virtually every dimension of life. The more optimistic you are, the happier you'll be, and the more things you'll be willing to attempt. The 15th law of success, the law of change, does simply that change is inevitable. Everything is changing, and all progress requires change. Your life can only get better when you get better. If you don't take advantage of change, you will end up being the victim of change. In conclusion, the laws of success are based on the foundation principle that in order to succeed, you must first decide what success means to you. You can then apply these laws to your definition of success to bring it more rapidly into your reality. If I were given only five minutes to speak to you, and could convey only one thought that would help you be more successful, I would tell you to write down your goals, make plans to achieve them, and work on those plans every single day. This advice, if followed, would be more helpful than anything else you could ever learn. The speed at which you move onward and upward will amaze both yourself and all the people around you. By following these simple and easy to apply methods and techniques, you can quickly move from rags to riches in the months and years ahead. You can transform your experience from poverty and frustration to affluence and satisfaction. You can go far beyond your friends and family and achieve more in life than most other people you know. Welcome. A great new adventure is about to begin. This is a wonderful time to be alive. There have never been more opportunities for creative and determined people to achieve more of their goals than today, regardless of short-term ups and downs in the economy and in your life. When I was 18, I left high school without graduating. My first job was as a dishwasher in the back of a small hotel. From there, I moved on to washing cars and then washing floors with a janitorial service. For the next few years, I drifted and worked at various laboring jobs, earning my living by the sweat of my brow. I worked in sawmills and factories, on farms and ranches, and in the tall timber with a chainsaw and digging wells. When the logging season ended, I worked as a construction laborer on tall buildings and as a seaman on a Norwegian freighter in the North Atlantic. Often I slept in my car or in cheap rooming houses. When I was 23, I was working as an itinerant farm laborer during the harvest, sleeping on hay in the barn and eating with the farmer's family. I was uneducated, unskilled, and at the end of the harvest, unemployed once more. When I could no longer find a laboring job, I got a job in straight commission sales, cold calling from office to office and from door to door. I would often work all day long to make a single sale so that I could pay for my rooming house and have a place to sleep that night. This was not a great start at life. Then one day, I took out a piece of paper and wrote down an outrageous goal for myself. To earn $11,000 per month in door-to-door -door and office-to-office -office selling, I folded up the piece of paper, put it away, and never found it again. But 30 days later, my entire life had changed. During that time, I discovered a technique for closing sales that tripled my income from the very first day. Meanwhile, the owner of my company sold out to an entrepreneur who had just moved into town. Exactly 30 days after I'd written down my goal, he took me aside and offered me $1,000 per month to head up the sales force and teach the other people what it was that enabled me to be selling so much more than anyone else. I accepted his offer, and from that day forward, my life was never the same. Within 18 months, I had moved from that job to another and then to another. I went from personal selling to becoming a sales manager with people selling for me. I recruited and built a 95-person sales force. I went literally from worrying about my next meal to walking around with a pocket full of $20 bills. I began teaching my salespeople how to write out their goals and how to sell more effectively. In almost no time at all, they doubled and tripled and increased their incomes as much as 10 times. Many of them are today millionaires and multimillionaires. As a result of inexperience and sometimes sheer stupidity, I have spent or lost everything I made and had to start over again several times. In every case when this happened, I would begin by sitting down with a piece of paper, laying out a new set of goals for myself using the methods that I'll explain in the sessions ahead. After several years of hit and miss goal setting and goal achieving, I finally decided to collect everything I had learned into a single system. By assembling these ideas and strategies in one place, I developed a goal setting methodology and process for the beginning, middle and end, and began to follow it every day. What I found was that these ideas work everywhere for everyone and virtually in every country. No matter what your education, experience or background may be, when you begin, most of all, these ideas have made it possible for me and many thousands of others to take complete control over our lives.
The regular and systematic practice of goal setting has taken us from poverty to prosperity, from frustration to fulfillment, from underachievement to success and satisfaction. This system will do the same for you. What I learned early on is that any plan is better than no plan at all. And it is not necessary to reinvent the wheel. All the answers have already been found. There are hundreds of thousands and even millions of men and women who have started with nothing and achieved great success following these principles. And what others have done, you can do as well if you just learn how. You will find that there are no limits to what you can accomplish except for the limits you place on your own imagination. And since there are no limits to what you can imagine, there are no limits to what you can achieve. All successful people are intensely goal-oriented. They know what they want, and they are focused single-mindedly on achieving it every single day. Your ability to set goals is the master skill of success. Goals unlock your positive mind and release ideas and energy for goal attainment. Without goals, you simply drift and flow on the currents of life. But with goals, you fly like an arrow straight and true to your target. One of the great rules for success is this. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. All that really matters is where you're going. And where you are going is solely determined by yourself and your own thoughts. Everything in your life started as a thought, a wish, a hope, a dream, either in your mind or in the mind of someone else. Your thoughts are creative. Your thoughts form and shape your world and everything that happens to you. Many thousands of successful people have been asked what it is that they think about most of the time. The most common answer given by successful people is that they think about what they want and how to get it most of the time. On the other hand, unsuccessful, unhappy people think and talk about what they don't want most of the time. They talk about their problems and their worries and who is to blame most of the time. But successful people keep their thoughts and conversation on the topics of their most intensely desired goals. They think and talk about what they want most of the time. You have the same goal achieving ability as the homing pigeon but with one marvelous addition. When you are absolutely clear about your goal, you don't even have to know where it is or how it is to be achieved. By simply deciding exactly what it is you want, you will begin to move unerringly toward your goal, and your goal will start to move unerringly toward you. At exactly the right time and in exactly the right place, you always achieve your goals, whatever they are. You move toward them, and they move toward you. If your goal is to get home at night and watch television, you will almost certainly achieve it. If your goal is to create a wonderful life full of health, happiness and prosperity, you'll achieve that as well. Nature doesn't care about the size or scope of your goals. If you set little goals, your automatic goal achieving mechanism will enable you to achieve little goals. If you set large goals, this natural capability will enable you to achieve large goals. Here's a good question. If goal setting is automatic, why is it that so few people have clear, written, measurable, time-bounded goals that they work toward each day? I believe there are four reasons why people don't set goals. First, most people don't realize the importance of goals. If you grow up in a home where no one has goals, or you socialize with a group where goals are neither discussed nor valued, you can very easily reach adulthood without knowing that your ability to set and achieve goals will have more of an effect on your life than any other skill. The second reason that people don't have goals is that they don't know how to set them in the first place. Even worse, many people think that they already have goals when, in reality, what they actually have is a series of wishes or dreams. A goal, however, is something distinctly different from a wish. A goal is clear, written, and specific. It can quickly and easily be described to another person, you can measure it, and you know when you have achieved it or not. And of course, if you never hear about goals until you're an adult, as I experienced, you'll have no idea how important they are to everything you do. They then make the mistake of unconsciously sabotaging themselves by not setting any goals at which they might fail. They end up going through life functioning at far lower levels than are truly possible for them. The fourth reason that people don't set goals is because of the fear of rejection. People are afraid that if they set a goal and are not successful, others will criticize or ridicule them. This is one of the reasons why when you begin to set goals, you should keep your goals confidential. Don't tell anyone. Let them see by your results and achievements what you have accomplished, but don't tell them in advance. What they don't know can't hurt you. The average person starts life traveling through an unmapped and uncharted world with no roadmap. This is the equivalent of starting off in life with no goals and plans. 
he or she simply figures things out as he or she goes along. Often, 10 or 20 years of work will go past, and the individual is still broke, unhappy in his or her job, dissatisfied with his or her marriage, and making little progress. And still, he or she goes home every night and watches television, wishing and hoping that things would get better. But they seldom do, not by themselves. Earl Nightingale once wrote, Happiness is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal or goal. You only feel truly happy when you are making progress, step by step, towards something that's important to you. Goals give you a sense of meaning and purpose. Goals give you a sense of direction. As you move toward your goals, you feel happier and stronger. More people today fear change and worry about the future than at any other time in our history. One of the great benefits of goal setting is that goals enable you to control the direction of change in your life. Goals enable you to assure that the changes in your life are largely self-determined and self-directed. Goals enable you to instill meaning and purpose into everything you do. Your greatest responsibility to yourself is to invest whatever time is required to become absolutely clear about exactly what it is you want and how you can best achieve it. The greater clarity you have regarding your true goals, the more of your potential you will unleash for good in your life. The sad fact is that, according to Stanford University, the average person functions with only about 2% of his or her mental potential. The remainder just sits there in reserve, being saved up for some later time. The starting point of all goal attainment is desire. You must develop an intense burning desire for your goals if you really want to achieve them. It is only when your desire becomes intense enough that you will have the energy and the internal drive to overcome all the obstacles that will arise in your path. The great oil billionaire H.L. Hunt was once asked the secret of success. He replied that success requires two things and two things only. First, he said, you must know exactly what it is you want. Most people never make this decision. Second, he said, you must determine the price that you will have to pay to achieve it, and then get busy paying that price. Many people make the mistake of thinking that they will pay the price after they've experienced the success. They sit in front of the stove of life and say, First give me some heat, and then I'll put in some wood. Setting goals, working toward them day by day, and ultimately achieving them is the key to happiness in life. Goal setting is so powerful that the very act of thinking about your goals makes you happy, even before you've taken the first step toward achieving them. To unlock and unleash your full potential, you should make a habit of daily goal setting and achieving for the rest of your life. There's no greater guarantee of a long, happy, healthy, and prosperous life than for you to be continually working on being, having, and achieving more and more of the things you really want. Clear goals enable you to release your full potential for personal and professional success. Goals enable you to overcome any obstacle and to make your future unlimited. Now here are three things you can do immediately to put these ideas into action. First, imagine that you have the inborn ability to achieve any goal you can ever set for yourself. What do you really want to be, have, and do? Second, look at your personal life and work today, and identify how your own thinking has created your world. What should you, what could you change? Third, determine the price that you will have to pay to achieve the goals that are most important to you, and then get busy paying that price. Hello everyone, I am truly honored and excited to share with you today about an important topic that I believe will change the lives of everyone in this room. We've all heard about the power of habits. But do you believe that there are habits that can make you powerful beyond what you ever imagine? Today we will explore and delve into these habits, and I promise you that by the time you leave here, you will feel equipped with a set of powerful tools to move further along the path to success. I have spent many years studying and applying these principles in my own life, and I want to share the secrets, the important discoveries that I found with you today. Let's together uncover these special habits and make our lives stronger than ever before. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Get ready to embark on this journey with me, and now let's get started. There are no limits to success. Never give up, be unstoppable. There is no failure except in ceasing to try. There is no defeat except from within. There is no insurmountable barrier except our own inherent inability to purpose. In 1895, Orison Sweat Martin, founder of the magazine Success, and author of Pushing to the Front, expressed one of the greatest principles of success of all time. He said that there are two parts to success. The first is achieving it, and the second is persevering in it. My term for this approach is, start and keep going. 
Persistence and determination have always been the most important qualities for success. As tough as it is, almost anyone can start working, but persevering against all odds, rising time and again to face failure and disappointment, requires the best in you. Napoleon Hill said, Persistence is to the character of man what carbon is to steel. The more persistent you are, the stronger you will become, and the stronger you become, the more you will be able to persist. There seems to be a relationship between persistence and self-discipline. The rule is that persistence is self-discipline in action. It's about having the strength to continue when you discipline yourself to persist, even when everything in you wants to give up. Developing the kind of character that will lead you to overcome any obstacle. Vince Lombardi said, Winners never quit, and quitters never win. There is also a direct relationship between persistence and qualities like self-esteem, self-respect, and personal pride. The more you discipline yourself to persist in adversity, the more you will love yourself, respect yourself, and feel empowered. Making more ideas available to your mental reach and accessible for improving your life and work. Develop persistence. Persistence is a habit, and like any habit, you can develop it within yourself through practice and repetition. Every act of persistence and self-discipline strengthens every other act of persistence and self-discipline. Every failure of persistence and self-discipline weakens you in all other areas. They are all connected. Your subconscious mind is very powerful. You can actually pre-program it. Much like programming an alarm to sound the way you want it to. If you want to be a persistent person, you can pre-program your mind to never give up. The way to do this is simple. You simply tell yourself, no matter what happens, I will never give up. Surprisingly, your subconscious mind accepts it as an order as if you've programmed a timer on your phone. The next time you face a setback or disappointment that would make an ordinary person give up, your subconscious mind will ring and remind you, you never give up. Then you'll say, wait a minute, I will never give up. Nelson Mandela said, do not judge me by my successes, judge me by how many times I fell down and got back up. There is only one person in the world who can prevent you from succeeding, and that's you. If you decide that you will never give up, Persistence soon becomes an automatic response to any problem or adversity. Without even thinking about it, you get up, stand strong, and keep moving forward. Knowing the importance of persistence for lasting success, I practiced this pre-programming on my children as they grew up. Throughout their young lives, I told them the same thing. I know one thing about you, you never give up. And it worked. My children are happy, healthy adults with good self-esteem, busy and engaged with their families and jobs. And they never give up. It's not part of their worldview, they never quit. At a certain age, they took control of their programming. Instead of having to say, you never give up regularly, they simply told themselves, no matter what happens, I never give up. Be unstoppable. One of the attendees at my seminars once asked me what I believe to be the most important quality for success in life. I thought about it for a moment and replied, the quality of being unstoppable. How do you become unstoppable? You simply repeat to yourself, I am unstoppable, over and over again. Then, no matter what happens, you won't stop until you've reached your goals. Previously, I mentioned that a major turning point in my life was when I learned about goals. Shortly after that, I had a second turning point. It was when I discovered that it's possible to learn any skill, quality, or habit you want to achieve any goal you set for yourself. You can learn to be persistent, just as you can learn any subject. While there are no limits, you are not a static human being. You are a human being in process, constantly evolving and developing in the direction of your dominant thoughts. You can become anyone you want to be, with any skill or habit you wish to develop. There are no limits except those you impose on yourself. When you decide to be a confident, competent, self-disciplined and persistent person, and you practice and develop yourself every day, there are no limits to what you can be, do, or have. In the exciting months and years ahead, you will start working with confidence and continue until you reach the greatness for which you were born. It's a great time to be alive. There has never been more opportunities for more people to create new businesses, careers, and be successful as there are today. The number of millionaires and billionaires is growing faster than at any other time in human history. You have more natural talent and abilities than you could use in 100 lifetimes. There is very little you cannot achieve if you are clear about your goals, develop written plans, and work on them until you achieve them. 
You are in charge of your life. You are responsible. As a wise man once said, don't go out and have a good day. Instead, go out and make a good day. The secret to success has always been the same. Start and continue. If you can do these two things every day, there are no limits to what you can achieve. Just do it. All success comes from the completion of tasks, from starting a job and completing it as soon as possible. Like other habits, procrastination is a learned behavior. It starts in early childhood and increases with age. The habit of procrastination in adults is perhaps the main reason for low performance and failure in all areas. Abraham Lincoln said, Things may come to those who wait, but only things left by those who hustle. To overcome procrastination, you must go to work. The moment you complete a task, you feel an inner joy and sense of satisfaction. Completing the job gives you energy, a feeling of accomplishment, and a greater sense of self-worth and self-esteem. The more you get done, the more you get done. Every task you complete increases your confidence and makes it easier for you to complete the next task. It is a virtuous circle. Every time you sit down and work on your highest priority task, you get closer to your goal. You become more powerful and more capable. By the time you complete all your tasks, you will have reached your goal. Your life will be what you want it to be. You will have become the person you want it to be. When you look back on all you have accomplished, you will be amazed at how much you have done and how far you have come. When you start working on a job and complete it, you feel more confident and competent. Your self-esteem increases. You develop the habit of completing the tasks you start. Your subconscious mind becomes your cheerleader. It helps you get started and keeps you going until the job is done. You develop a reputation for being a reliable, responsible, and trustworthy person. Your boss, your colleagues, and your family and friends begin to rely on you. Your value and importance increase. You become more respected and admired. Your future opportunities expand. Your financial future becomes brighter and more secure. Your relationships become more satisfying and fulfilling. Your whole life becomes happier and more successful. When you complete a task, you can reward yourself with a positive statement, such as, I did it. You can also reward yourself with a short break, such as a walk, a cup of coffee, or a phone call to a friend. These rewards help reinforce the behavior of completing tasks. They provide positive reinforcement that makes you want to complete more tasks. The more tasks you complete, the more rewards you receive. The more rewards you receive, the more motivated you become to complete even more tasks. This cycle of task completion and reward builds momentum. You start to feel like you can accomplish anything. You become an unstoppable force of nature. You become a high-performing, highly productive person. You become the kind of person who achieves great success in life. I believe that there is greatness within each and every one of us, waiting to be unleashed. It's time to step into your power, to embrace these habits of success, and to create the life you've always dreamed of. Remember, you are unstoppable. You are capable of achieving anything you set your mind to. Start today, and never give up. Thank you.